Hello, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. There has been another Zen 3 CPU benchmark leak, and this time it's the 5900X, which is the 12 core and 24 thread CPU. Now, a couple of days ago, I covered the 5800X, and that's the 8 core 16 thread CPU. And in that video, I covered how Zen 3 might have 25% faster single threaded performance. Now, I'm not going to go over everything that I said in that video, so make sure to go and check that video out as well. At this stage, it's looking like Zen 3 desktop launch will just be two CPUs, which is the 5900X and the 5800X. Now, just before we get started, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this. So WCCF Tech had an article up today, and they wrote about how the Ryzen 9 5900X, which is the 12 core 24 thread CPU, might have up to 15% faster multi-threaded performance and 25% faster single threaded performance versus the Ryzen 9 3900X. The source of this leak was from 9550Pro on Twitter, and he posted up a screenshot from from CPU-Z of what looks to be the 5900X CPU. Now if we take a look at this screenshot here, directly under tabs there is a section for single threaded performance and it shows the 5900X at 652.8 points and it compares it with another CPU which is actually the 3700X CPU and that has a score of 511 and under that is the multi-threaded performance and the 5900X scores 9,481.8 points, and in comparison, the 3700X scores 5,433 points. Now, directly under those two bars, there's a pop-down menu there, and it's been grayed out, but it says 24, and that tells me that's got to be the 12-core 24-thread CPU. Now, under that, it says what the benchmark version is, which is 17.01.64. And then after that, it says what the actual CPU is, and it's got a model number there of like 100 and a lot of zeros and 61. And we'll get back to the model number in just a sec. And also, it compares it to whatever CPU that you want to choose from this pop-down menu. Surprisingly, they chose a 3700X, and maybe they just want to make this new CPU look really good. So while it's great to compare it to the 3700X, I think it would make more sense if we compared it to the 3900X. And here I've got a chart from CPU-Z, and I've edited in the performance of the 5900X, so you can see how it stacks up with the 3900X. So the 5900X scores 652.8 points and the 3900X score 522 points, which is roughly about 25% faster in single threaded performance. In multi threaded performance, the 5900X was 9,481 points and the 3900X is 8,189 points, which makes it about 15% faster in multi threaded performance. Now let's talk about how it stacks up to the Intel i9 10900K. And CPU-Z doesn't actually have scores for this. I'm not exactly sure why, but um, they allow user-submitted scores. So that was all I could compare it to. So we've got here two user-submitted scores for the 10900K, one at five gigahertz and the other one at 5.3 gigahertz. So for the i9 10900K at five gigahertz, the 5900X is still 12% faster in single-threaded performance. In multi-threaded performance, the 5900X is much faster than 10900K and it looks to be about 29% faster. And this is obviously helped by the fact that the 5900X is 12 cores, 24 threads, and the 10900K is 10 cores and 20 threads. So let's see how the overclocked 10900K stacks up. And it's very close in single threaded performance where the 5900X and the 10900K are basically equal. In multi-threaded performance, the overclocked 10900K caught up a little bit. So now the 5900X is only 16% faster. So some people might ask, well, there's 25% gain in the single core performance, but only only 15% in the multi-core, shouldn't there also be 25% multi-core performance gain as well? And I don't think it really works like that and I'll explain why. Single core performance allows for a much higher clock frequency and also a higher power draw. So you can get higher clock frequencies when you're operating just one single thread. So as you can see from this chart from Tech Power Up for the 3900X, when you're using one thread, there is a much higher clock frequency of about 4.5 gigahertz. But if you're using all of the threads, then that frequency goes down to 4.2 gigahertz. Similarly, if you look at this chart from Anantech, which shows the 3900X power loading, when you 
using two threads, it uses up 17.6 watts of power, but if you're actually using 24 threads, those same two threads only use 10.16 watts of power. In terms of gains between generations, the difference between the 3900X and the 5900X is roughly on par to what we've seen in previous generations and maybe a little bit better. Here I've got a comparison between the Ryzen 7s because there was no Ryzen 9s for the first generation and we see that between the Ryzen 7 3700X to the Ryzen 7 2700X, there was about 12% difference. And between the 2700X and the 1700X, there was also a similar performance gain as well. For the Ryzen 5, there was a 13% difference between the 2600X and the 3700X, and a 6% difference between the 2600X and the 1600X. Now, in regards to this model number here, shown in this leaked screenshot from CPU-Z, there were some questions whether this was actually the 50 900X or whether this was another CPU. Back on the 5th of September, Patrick Shure said that this model part was indeed a 12 core and not a 16 core model. Now it does say here that this CPU was the Dash 06 model and the screenshot actually had Dash 08, but that could mean that the Dash 08 could be a new revision of the same CPU. Now I'm sure everybody wants to know when the CPUs are coming out and Yuri Bubili writes that Zen 3 will be launched on the 20th of October for the 5800X and the 5900X and also Navi 2 will be on 15th to 20th of November and he says that this is old information but AMD has not adjusted their plans. One thing that I briefly touched on in the last video was the fact that the 5900X would have a 150 watt TDP. WCCF Tech writes that the details also highlight that the Ryzen 9 5900X will ship with a TDP of up to 150 watts which is 45 watts higher than the Ryzen 9 3900X which had 105 watts TDP. Now a lot of people might think that 45 watts is a lot and sure it is 50% more than what we had in the previous generation. But the TDP is really just an indication for users to class a different CPUs into different segments of the market. So last generation we had the 3600 and the 3700X in the 65 watt class. And then we also had the 3800X and the 3900X with a higher TDP of about 105 watts. And for all of these CPUs, they actually use more power than they listed for their TDP. So here we see the 3900X has an idle power of about 55 watts which is for the whole system by the way. But in a full multi-threaded application, it uses 201 watts of power. And in tech writes, there is a power threshold that is allowed to be delivered to the socket. This is 88 watts for 65 watt TDP processors and 142 watts for 105 watt TDP processors. And just for comparison, if you look at the 10900K, the thermal design power was 125 watts and it uses almost 45 watts more than the 3900X and over 100 watts more when it's overclocked. So the question of whether it's 50% more isn't really that much of an issue considering they use a lot more power draw anyways. And finally, just a quick word on all of these leaked benchmarks coming out. The 25% gain in performance for the CPU doesn't mean that it's going to translate to 25% more gaming performance. Gaming performance is dependent on a variety of factors including the GPU, the CPU, the memory, the SSD. So make sure to check the actual performance benchmarks when the CPUs finally release. All right, that's it for this one make sure to click on the like button if you like this video and also to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this and i'll see you in the next one